Hi there. Um, for quite a long time, my good friend Thomas Brogan has been trying to convince me to, uh, well, at some point, buy a Sanjin ATS 909X. Um, Tom's got a large collection of receivers, many of them portables. He has an excellent collection of radios. He knows a lot about hardware. Um, it was he that convinced me to buy the Sony uh, ICF SW100, the Texan. Uh, PL310ET, um, amongst others, uh, and he's always right. So I managed to get hold of one on eBay for just over a hundred pounds less than they sell new, um, and it was described by the seller as having been used once. Um, so that I thought was a pretty good deal. Now Tom's view on this radio is that it's extremely well put together. Um, a high quality uh, receiver um, and so I thought to myself well why not if I can save a hundred pounds um, so here it is now the thing with this receiver is that well the two potential issues are that apparently it's a bit deaf on the telescopic but I'm gonna test that shortly um, but that it kind of comes alive with a long wire uh, it's got a robust front end that can handle large antennas which is kind of perfect for me because uh, as you kind of all know um, I do a lot of my DXing with long wires so it sort of fits um, so so this is it uh, as I said it, it's not brand new um, it was described as having been used once um, where this radio actually came from originally I'm not sure but there's a clue uh, in that the um, well there's a manual so this is a manual in various languages um, but then there's kind of what looks like a short sort of start guide which is in German uh, and the plug there you go that's not a UK plug it's a European plug so uh, perhaps it was originally sold on the German market comes with the uh, little headphones that haven't been used um, it comes in a case which is which is quite nice and then there's the uh, real antenna the ANT60 uh, I've got a couple of Sony versions of this um, I don't know how long that is it looks a bit bigger but um, those little antennas are always quite useful so let's get it out of the case and so here it is um, my first impression, actually, of this radio is that actually it's not actually as big as I thought it was, as I thought it would be. Um, when you compare it to the Eaton, it's it's a bit bigger than the Eaton, but it, I imagine it actually to be a bit bigger than it actually is. Um, what it is, though, it is. And Thomas said this would, was the case that it's quite hefty in weight, so it kind of like it's quite heavy, which certainly gives it a feeling of, of quality. Um, locked it um, so it does look to be in just about as new condition there's a one or two marks on it but um, otherwise it's in excellent condition um, thing with this radio that I really like is the fact that you, you won't be able to see it in here because it's quite light but let me just turn the lights off a second the display on this thing is immense and I love that um, that is perfect for someone like me who's going to be out in the woods at 3 o'clock in the morning um, you can see what you're doing you won't need to wear a, a sort of one of those uh, head gear uh, torches um, so yeah that's a fantastic bonus for me um, you can access the uh, fr uh, frequencies directly by pressing, if we press F here, um, see what's going on. and then enter, or you can tune this way with the, uh, it's a bit like a Sony jog dial. Um, let's put the antenna up actually, otherwise we're going to get no wet. 
Um, let me just turn the heating on because it's in 410. If we go frequency. Okay. So, um, so there it is. Um, you can access the uh, meter bands using the uh, front pad. Um, there's a, a lock here so that when you're traveling, um, you can lock all the keys. It won't accidentally, accidentally switch itself on. Select uh, shortwave, medium wave, long wave FM. Um, scan function up and down which hasn't stopped on what I was tuned to, but, but nevertheless. Um, timer, uh, SSB mode on the front there. Right, and so you can just see this. So on the left-hand side, we have an AM external antenna, auxiliary in, uh, which is actually switchable. It's got an off button. Uh, line uh, out in the standby for recording, headphone uh, jack and a power uh, socket. Uh, and then there's an RF gain wheel here, which if I turn the volume up. Uh, that's minimum. And that's maximum. So that works. Squelch, which is a bit unusual on the portable these days. Um, and then there's stereo mono switch, which uh, doubles up as a AM wide narrow. And then there's a tone control. So there's a sort of middle section, which they're describing as normal, news, and then music. Um, and then a manual and automatic time set and the volume control. So overall, oh, um, a nice looking piece of kit. So I'm pretty happy with this, um, particularly for what I paid for it, as I said, which was um, £100, just over £100 less than they sell for in the UK new. Um, I'm going to compare it against the Eaton on the telescopic antenna here, um, just to check out this, uh, what I hear that on the telescopic, it's um, it is a little bit deaf on shortwave. Um, we shall see, but I'm more interested in what it will do with a long wave. Uh, sorry, with a long wire antenna. Um, there's three buttons on the top, which you may or may not be able to see um, for setting the clock, uh, and world time, uh, and home time. So toggling between world time and home time, and then there's uh, a button in the middle. Got a picture of the sun on it, which I'm maybe uh, something to do with timing the uh, the backlight. Um, let me have a quick look. Uh, the manual's actually pretty good, too. Okay, so yes, it's the daylight saving time switch, so useful for um, British summertime, etc. So there it is. Um, it's got RDS, so uh, which probably won't be much use to me. Um, but I'm happy that uh, I finally managed to get one of these um, for a good price. So um, a couple more videos to come where I'll compare it to the Eaton uh, with the telescopic, and then beyond that, um, I will uh, I'll take it out on the expeditions and see what it can do um, with the long wire. But uh, Thomas was right. It is uh, well. I've always liked, I've always felt that in terms of the kind of industrial design, the aesthetics of this radio, it's a, it is kind of a beautiful looking radio. There's no doubt about that. And it does on uh, um, on sort of on first impressions um, feel like a well made piece of kit. I know the, there were issues with the when it originally came out, some quality control issues. But hey, you know, same with the Eaton um, and the last kind of high end or higher end Texan I bought started falling apart straight out of the uh, box so um, my expectations on that front are probably not low but not as high as others might be um, 
But yeah, I'm just interested to see what this radio will do. My ATS 803A, which is, you know, uh, was a great radio, a great sort of budget radio. This isn't a budget radio, it's actually really expensive. Um, you know, that was a, uh, that, well, once I res rescued it from the shed and, uh, and kind of repaired it, it proved to be very good. Um, I think it's developing some issues. I, I tried it the other night and um, the audio is very, very crackly on it now. So I think there's probably some solder joints in there that are basically corroding away. Um, I've sort of got a feeling that that radio might die soon. So it's nice to have another Sanjian um, that's in good condition and one that I'll actually look after. So um, yeah, I'm very pleased um, to have finally got my hands on one of these. And um, so, as I said, some couple of videos to come where I'll just check the sensitivity out um, on the telescopic against the uh, Eaton. But in the meantime, thanks for watching.